stay to you. <laughs> is it the tits? It's the tits. <laughs> Number 23. Oh, no, I'm a fucking dickhead then. Fruit Lambic. Good. Now this, this is, I know I say this a lot, but this is the best beer I've, I've had of yours. Um, you keep getting better and better and better with the way you brew your beers. And to have a Lambic on tap at your house that tastes like this is absolutely unreal. So, for, for those who don't know, a Lambic is an aged soured beer, uh, fruited, obviously, because it's the fruit Lambic. And this was fruited with raspberries or cherries? A uh, mix of both. Mix of both. So that uh, gives it that redness, even though like a, a normal Lambic kind of goes a bit reddish, like um, uh, Asian barrels, mate, as well. Uh, plastic barrels. No, glass barrels. Glass barrels with with wood chips or, or no? To get uh, extra. Not in this one. Really? Dude, this is kind of almost like barrel aging. Like yeah. I'm getting like barrel age vibes off this. Yeah, it's Why got is that? A, bit of, a bit of skunk to it. I think it's just from the bacteria that came from the um, yeast blend that I was using. Okay. Look, straight straight away, uh, if you've ever had a lambic or a, uh, you know, a traditionally soured beer, not a kettle soured, you get a lot of those lovely, like, subtle farmhousey aromas. I'm a little bit devo that Luke isn't here for this one because it would have used, like, his favourite... Um, Adjective horse blanket. Horse blanket. He loves that horse blanket, but it's not like blanket. it's not bready horse blanket. You know how like Brett horse blanket is. Oh yeah. It's like in your face. This is this is so subtle, so subtle yet persistent. Where mm. it's it's not unpleasant in any way. This this could even be like someone who is into even like white wine or you know. Yeah, it almost is in that like territory, that. isn't it? It's got like a bit of the fruitiness, but also like sort of that acidity like complex complexity oh, fuck. let's call it so you get straight away there's this sweet flavor that comes across you can you can really taste the fruit mm -hmm. and what then happens is you get like in the back of your throat uh, like this slightest 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 bitterness that rolls through to the like the sour uh, or it's not sour though it's like tart yeah. and you can start to get like your mouth salivate from from the the tartness of the of the beer it's it's if you've been if you're in adelaide and you've been to the belgium uh, you know um belgian calf belgian beer calf major sponsor major sponsor obviously um a crake uh which is a cherry lambic um is this is this is better than anything they've had on tap there by the Ooh. way this is um I, I don't know what to compare it to commercially because it's not like we buy these all the time either. No. But um, that Cascade Creek mm -hmm. that we had, this mate, this this is on par with that. Territory, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just hitting my face in the background, contending with a mosquito right now. Don't don't mind me, Chris. Stay professional. Uh, recipe, mate. What are, what are, what do we have in this in this one? Bare bones. It is half pilsner, half wheat. Which is pretty pretty standard for those sort of styles. So obviously it's just a bit of a building block for. Oh, there's also like fuck all hops as well. Traditionally, you would use a um, an aged hop. Uh, or, example. Uh, or any hop that's pretty much just been let out to sort of skunk and lose its sort of alpha acid, but still kind of keep its preserving properties. So I've actually got some hops that I've left out at room temp kind of ready for Lambic 2 and 3 for my next sort of projects just so they're ready in time but um, I think this was like maybe like a pinch of SARS or just something to you know get me the 5, 6 IBUs that I needed for being a Lambic that's right that's gone now alright we're functioning on one we're camera on <laughs> um, got bloody steady hand mic on the job what, what I love about this is that even if you haven't had these types of beers before, um, this is uh, this is approachable, um, mm. and this isn't a type of beer that is approachable. Like, yeah, it's not wouldn't... like they're plastered all over the shelf. You're <clears throat> picking which land that you're going to drink for the night. No, and you know they're, they're terrifying too for people who. This is like almost what the um, 
the the non craft beer drinker sees as craft beer. Do you know? Like yeah. a fifty dollar bottle that's corked and caged, and why am I spending this much for a beer that tastes like shit? And because it's not, fuck it's not them tastes like why. shit. It's I'm this is <laughs> yeah, it fuck them also. But the once you once you understand what it takes to make a lambic, and especially like a fruited lambic, like. You, you understand what the cost is about first. It's about babying this thing for a year and a half to make mm-hmm. sure it tastes like this. And and secondly, it's about the knowledge of what you have to do to to make sure it does taste like this in the end and not just vinegar, you know? Mm. You've, you've done a really good job in making sure that it tastes right, that I'm not going to die from fucking pediococcus, like, you know, the, okay, you know you infections not. and shit after this. Um, the 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 more I smell that, the more I get like the cherry as opposed to the raspberry. Yeah. Um, and the reason I said raspberry initially was because of how sweet this tastes. Mm-hmm. Um, you don't get any hop or, or or real bitterness on the flavor or aroma. No. It's um it's it's all soured, fruited beer. That that's what's here. Yeah. Yeah, I did a bit of a sneaky as well because this fruit, I thought, I just read an article by Brewlosophy about, you know, how much can you get out of using fruit twice. So I've kind of had used some raspberries for a villain of ice and I thought, well, fuck it, I'm going to be bringing a bit of the bugs over from that. I might as well. Uh, That's awesome. Struggle with the lamp. It might have even struggled to actually, you know, compete, but it was uh, a bit of an ad hoc decision. So, so how long uh, did you, uh, did you like sour this? So this was just sitting as like a base beer, uh, gold amber color in my office for about, shit, almost bang on a year. And it was the uh, fruits uh, that went in with about, you know, four weeks to go. Cause I figured, you know, kind of once you got past that first part, you kind of get yeah. a diminishing return, say. So, uh, Did yeah, you temperature I, control it or was it just- uh, No, this has gone through about three heat waves, I reckon. And it's kind of, uh, I mean, it's not like super, variation but it's um yeah it kind of been exposed to the elements a little bit we'll say this is not a beer to tackle as a beginner brewer either um this once you have some knowledge like oh, look if, if you if all you know is you know lambics and you know <laughs> soured beers and you want to you know start a souring process like by all means but the, the dangerous thing about this is if you're brewing normal beer and you don't want infections and stuff like that yeah the, the bugs can go everywhere and so that's why i'm so not surprised because you're, you're a fucking genius but like the the way you were able to make this with your brewery the way you know you you've got it yeah yeah and not get any cross contamination and that's it like i have served this off of a tap <clears throat> that's dedicated to sour beers and keep it in a keg that's you know dedicated to sour beers and use fermenters that are de- dedicated to sour beers now so i'm really and they're separate from the other shit in the yeah, yeah yeah so once the yeast goes in that's pretty much it's uh destined for that fermenter and that fermenter is also destined to just have those sort of bugs in it so I've, it's one of those things I wonder if I'm being too anal or not but you know no because your, your other beers are coming out perfect and there's yeah. a reason you, you know you start get you know if you are wanting to brew beers like this stick to brewing beers like this you know yeah. or, or keep a section of your shed or your brewery or whatever separate for this and, and keep the souring process going because it's, it's really addictive as well once you yeah. start brewing good soured beers you want to keep that souring process going Definitely. Um, this is a six and a half percent beer, and it drinks like a two percent. Like, it's easier to drink than water because um, it's got some flavour and some aroma, and gives you a little kiss every time you sip it. You want to keep going back. Um, and this is part of our homebrew challenge that that we're taking on the BJCP challenge. I, 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 I'm still up in arms about. We look. Long story short, we started this thing thinking we were original, and we've since found that other people have done it. And like, we don't know what to do now because we're like. We're in too deep. Yeah, we're in. We're in already, and we. Uh, so what we're doing is we're 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 taking the BJCP, and we're brewing every single beer. Uh, we've counted up 120, and uh, and we want to brew a perfect example of each style, for for a couple of reasons. Because who doesn't want to taste every kind of beer that you know there is out there? But we we want to learn and and be the best kind of brewers we can be. And the only way we can get some of these beers, honestly is by brewing them ourselves. Like we can buy a one-off and then drink it and all right, that's what it tastes like. But we're in Adelaide. <laughs> if you want an oat cream at the moment, go for your life. But you know, everything <laughs> else is, uh, you know, kind of uh, kind of uh, non-existent. So 
yeah, thank you very much for, for having a watch and a, and a listen to us. And uh, please like and subscribe and do all that stuff. We've got tons of these videos coming out. We're brewing all the time, especially Duds and, uh, and the Vibe. So yeah, we'll uh, come back real soon with a new uh, video for you.